Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Michelle Mahoney here. Today we are going to be doing a reading wrap up. So this is going to be for February, but I also didn't do one for January. So I figured I would throw my January books in here as well. That way we're all cut up with the year. Today is March 1st. So it is the start of a new month. And I really, really want to make this a four book month. If not five, that would be an ultimate goal is probably five. So let's set it for five. <music> Um, in January and in January I read three books. The first book that I read was Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. Absolutely loved this one. It was really good. My really good friend Gina recommended and bought this book for me because I am now a writer, a published author. And so it's really exciting. And she knows that I'm on this journey of my writing my second book now. And this book is really good for writers. Um, and gives a lot of different, it, it says here, some instructions on writing and life. And so she gives you some ideas and insights and inspirations for a writer's mind. So how to really think about characters and how to sit down and write and like scenarios where you would write in and things like that. And so um, I found it super helpful and definitely something I would even probably reread someday just because it has like a lot of different insights. So maybe even something that not really read it from front to back again, but I would kind of go through and pick through and kind of just read some of her inspirations again because it was very insightful. And I really, really did like this a lot. So it was a good way to start off the year because I'm finishing up my second book, like I said, and hopefully that will be going within the next week or so. I really want it out this month. And so that is something I'm working on and I'm really excited to share that with you guys as well. The second book here is Tuesdays with Maury. Now this one I've already sold in my online shop, so I don't have the hard copy with me anymore, but this book, oh my gosh. If I could not recommend this book for everybody in the entire world to read, this book is one that is life changing. It really kind of gives you a different way of thinking about life and insightful thoughts about living and how to live and how you've lived up until this point. And it's the view from an old man who um, is um, being interviewed necessarily. Uh, yeah, he's kind of being interviewed by one of his former students. And this former student was somebody that said he was always going to like keep in contact with Maury, but then he never does. And then he comes back later in life. And um he just kind of really starts thinking about the perspective of Maury and his life and, you know, how he should be living his own life and the way that we kind of miss out on life and we get stressed about things that really don't need to be stressed about or we don't pursue dreams because we're afraid. And this kind of changes your mindset and your view of like when you're old and dying, like none of this stupid bullshit matters. It really doesn't matter. And we stress about things that are so unnecessary to stress about. And what we're really doing is wasting our life or we're letting fear control us. And it's just, it's such a great, powerful book. So if you have not, rec if you have not read this book, I highly recommend it. It's a pretty quick read. It's around 200 ish pages. Um, so you could read it probably in a day. Uh, it was just really, really good. So I definitely recommend that book for sure. And my third book for this month was Nothing to Fix. This book was awesome. I actually had this book in my online shop and I had sold it and I had a couple days before I had to ship it. And I just knew this was a book that I literally only saw the front, the cover. And I was just like, I have to read this book. There's something about this book. I have to read it. So before I shipped it out to my person, I binge read it, read it because I just couldn't give it up without reading it. And so I read that book in under two days and it was so good. Uh, it talked about, um, you know, healing from life and past traumas and it really inter it really introduced like yoga and kind of meditation and things like that. And that's something I'm really exploring even more this year. I started going to yoga once a week if we, if I can, um, last year, a few months ago, when I discovered that my daughter's dance school has a yoga teacher going there now. And I just have always been interested. I went for prenatal yoga when I was pregnant with my first daughter. I tried maybe once with my second daughter, but things got chaotic and I didn't make it a priority. And now I'm really trying to make it a priority. So 
I am making sure that Monday mornings, every Monday morning is available for me to be able to go to yoga. Um, it hasn't happened a ton this year just because there's like so much catching up to do, but I've gone a few times and this Friday actually I'm super excited um, maybe not once every month, but every couple of months, they do this thing called restorative yoga and you go for like a couple of hours and it's like totally like mind restoring, body restoring. They do Reiki, which I, I'm still not a hundred percent understanding of exactly what it is. So I can't really give you too much insight about it. Um, but it's just like, it's kind of like this aura cleansing activity that they do. These particular women, um, they do actually like touch you and kind of do some massages and they use essential oils and things. All these things I never thought I would ever do in my entire life. Like I just never really sure I was a believe I believed in them or that they could work for me. And it's absolutely life changing. Yoga has changed my mindset in so many different ways and it's helped me let go of a lot of things and actually like heal me. Like for me, yoga is therapy. Um, I've gone to a therapist before in the past and I still think about it once in a while, but yoga is like self therapy almost I, I can't really explain it I guess the way I want to but it just is like a, a time of day that I can just go and like totally be myself and be in my head like you're supposed to be like in your head cleansing your body moving your body you're with fellow people who are not judging you or, or at least I don't feel like I'm being judged when I'm there it's just such a calming relaxing thing it's like a great way to start my week to start my day and like get in the right mindset. So I just, if you've never tried yoga before, I recommend trying it out. But this book also talks about a lot about yoga and how it can like help your life. But it also tells her about her life story and like how you can, you know, move on from things and not get too stuck forever. So it was definitely a really, really good book. So January was really good. It was really insightful. And I read a lot of like good, like I guess self-help books, but they were really, really great and a great way to like start off the year. I'm trying to really have a good fresh year and like redo some of the things that I was doing in the past and like fixing 2022 stuff that I brought with me and like I want to let it go. And so January books were really good for that. So for, let's see, um, I have um, reading tasks, uh, task trackers. And so like I try to keep track of my books here and I, I do have these available on my website. So if you want to check them out, you can print them off for free. Um, I just feel like I like to keep track of my books and so other people might as well. I do use Goodreads as well. I love Goodreads, but I'm just like a pen to paper kind of person. So like I like to write them down and Goodreads, as far as I know so far, I don't know if you can track them month by month. I track them like on a list. And so I like doing it like this. I guess I could create different bookshelves. I don't know. It could get complicated. I like pen to paper. So I'm going to keep doing this. Um, for February, I read one of Colleen Hoover's books, which was Ugly Love. Oh my God. Oh my God. I also don't have a copy of that. So I'm going to show it here. Um, I'm letting somebody borrow it right now, but Ugly Love is a fantastic story. Um, there's like love and romance and passion and conflict and hatred. And it's just like, it's fantastic. The way she writes it is really great. It has some erotic moments in it. So it definitely can get you going. It's, it's really, really good. It's an easy read, quick, um, keeps you on your toes kind of thing. Uh, fantastic. Colleen Hoover is just amazing. Like if you haven't read any of her books, you, you need to just start, just pick any of them. Cause I, I can't imagine that she has a bad book out there. I have not read them all yet, but I do have her as one of my authors that I want to read all of her books. Um, so she's on my list for that because her books are just awesome. Um, the next one is an audio book I listened to and that was Girls Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis. Fantastic book um, because it was an audio book. I'll put it here. Um, Rachel Hollis is somebody that is definitely controversial, especially recently and lately um, her ex-husband just recently passed away like rest in peace I can't even believe it she must be going through hell right now um but the girl stop apologizing is just a really good inspirational story to kind of like get you out of your own head right get in the right mindset as you can see there's been a theme here this year um I really do want to get more into like the novels and fiction and things like that so like I'm flowing into that but I definitely love the self-help inspiration genre as well. Like, I just feel like it's good to keep my mind in a good place, but I think I'm going to try to limit myself to maybe one a month and not so many because sometimes I like, I'm actually reading an audio audio book right now, the Mel Robbins, um, five habits. 
and it's great and I love it because I love listening to it while I work out. So like I feel like I'm going to have my inspirational book for my workouts because I feel like it gets me going and gets me pumped up for the day. But when I'm reading like handheld books, I want to kind of stick to like my fiction and my fun stories and my romance and things like that. So it's something I'm working to do maybe as I move forward. Um, I also read Pride and the Pre Prejudiced. I'm not going to, I know it's a classic, but it's just not my thing. The writing is like old fashioned and the story was all right. I don't know. It's just eh in my book. I know people love it. It's a classic, but it was okay. It just wasn't my thing. Um, I do want to watch the movie and maybe that will kind of get me in a better mood. It just, I spent so much time like figuring out what the heck they were saying. And I, I'm a reader and a writer and I always have been like, I know what they're saying, but it just, I don't know. It takes too long to like figure out what they're talking about and have them move along in the story. And it's just like, this is why when I read it in high school, I didn't really care for it either. But I figured as an adult, maybe I would appreciate it more. Turns out I don't. <laughs> I just don't. It's not my It's not for me. Jane Austen, great. I've heard lovely things. I've tried. I might still try a couple more stories, but yeah, I don't know. Not my thing. So I wouldn't recommend, but here's a copy. Um, I actually do have a copy of the book, but I, I don't even know. I probably buried it somewhere because I just don't even want to look at it anymore. <laughs> um, and my last book for February, I know today's March 1st. I'm going to try to still finish this tonight so I can mark it off for my February list um, because it's my list and I can do whatever I want. Um, I know it's March 1st, but I want to finish this and have this on my February list. So we'll see if I can do that. Um, if it goes in tomorrow, I still might just keep it as February because I did start it in February and got most of it read during February. Um, but this is The Magician. Now, this is a historical fiction novel, which is not typically something I would pick up, but I heard great things about it. So I was like, all right, I'll try it. And crazily enough, I'm actually like enjoying it. I'm not obsessed. I'm not addicted. I don't like always want to pick it up. But when I do pick it up, I am invested and I'm reading it along. Like I'm actually enjoying while I'm reading, which is for me a big thing because I'm not into history and historical fiction type things necessarily. But they do talk about um, a lot of like real topics. Definitely some controversial things for some people. Definitely some relationship type things. Very personal things. But it is a essentially a little dry for me as like the characters telling his story in a lifeline it's almost like you would just be sitting down with like a stranger and then they're just like telling you little parts of their life so like I don't know it's not really like um following like a typical novel would follow where it's like um you know you get to know the characters and then there's a plot and then there's a conflict and then there's a resolution like it doesn't really travel like that so far um it's kind of just like him like telling about his life. So I don't know. It's like a bunch of little stories in one big story. So we'll see how the ending goes for me. But I still am finding myself wanting to read it, which is good. Because I'm not like forcing my pride in the prejudice. I had to like force myself to read it. And it's painful. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Um, whereas this one, I'm like actually enjoying it. I still want to know what's happening to the character Thomas and like what's going to happen next. So I'm still invested, but I'm just not... Like, I don't know if I would reach out to this author and, like, find more books of his. I don't know if I'd be going that far. But so far, so good. So um, if you're into historical fiction, I would maybe recommend it in that sense because you might enjoy it a little bit more than I do. Um, but definitely still one that I wouldn't... If I had to read it again, I probably would just because maybe I'll pick up on more things, um, if that makes any sense. But maybe, like, a three-star or something like that. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to finish this for the month of February and then move on to March. And March, my list of to be read is pretty long, but I have some really great books and I'm super excited. So let me show you a couple of those that I'm going to be reading this month. It was really hard to just pick five books for my to be read list because I have a lot of to be read books, but I know I just want to pick out five at least to start with. And I'm really hoping that I'm able to read even more than five books. Like if I could read two books a week, that would be totally ideal. I'm definitely more heavily invested in reading and sharing about these books more than ever before. Um, reading has always been a passion of mine, but as an adult and when you have kids and like things kind of fall off, right? But I'm really like heavily invested again and I'm really loving it. And it's something that completely brings me joy. And when people ask me about books, I'm really excited to talk about them. Like the other day I was at a doctor's appointment and when the nurse came to grab me, she asked me what I was reading and we ended up chatting like the whole time about books. And it was like so fun and amazing. And I'm like, it just keeps clicking in my head. I'm like, 
this is what I got to be doing. This is what I have to be talking about. This is what I have to be sharing about because I love it. I enjoy it so much. Like, I love hearing about different books to read and I love being able to share about it with other people as well. Um, oh, I just realized too, that's my book back there on the shelf. I have to display it, right? So that's my first book. And then my next one I'll talk about in a future video. But here, let's get to my five to be read books that I want to read for this month. So the first one is an author that I have not read yet, but I hear wonderful things and I can't wait to read something of hers. It is Taylor Jenkins Reid, Taylor Jenkins Reid, and it's called One True Love's. Um, I got this actually off of Pango and it's in a fantastic condition. Like, I don't even know. This must have been like a brand new book for this girl or she just read it really delicately. Um, but I'm super excited to read a book of hers because I just hear wonderful things. I hear she's like on the same realm as Colleen Hoover. Like you can't put it down and it's like really, really good. So I'm super excited to read this book. I also have another book of hers on my list, which is Daisy Jones and the Six, which is also super popular and trending. And everyone is saying such wonderful things about this. Um, I heard one girl even say that she thought this was like a true story because it was like so realistic. And I can't remember now who, what the band was that she thought it was, but um, super excited. She is the author of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I also read. I think actually I technically finished that in December fantastic book. I, I loved that book so much. Um, so now that I think about it, I have read a Taylor Jenkins read book because I forgot about the seven husbands of El uh, Evelyn Hugo. So I have read something from her. And so I have these two on my list uh, for this year, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, this one I just heard about actually on TikTok and I'm super excited. I went to Target the other day and I grabbed it. It's called Girl in Pieces. And so I'm pretty excited to read this one. Um, maybe I should have been reading the backs for you guys, but it just at the top, it says you can spot the girls who have it easy. And then there's me. So like, that's just enough for me. I'm someone who, if you can tell by like the cover of my book, um, I grew up very depressed and anxious and have anxiety. And like, I just, I can relate to a lot of stories like this. And so it's kind of like nice to hear that, like you're not alone in things, even if they're a fiction story. Um, there's a lot of relatable things in these kinds of story and like I like to read about it. I just, I don't know, I'm dark, I guess, but I'm excited to read this because I heard such great things. So this is on my list for sure. This one also is an oldie, but I also heard wonderful things. I think it is considered young adult, um, but I'm pretty excited about this one. It's called Fangirl. And again, I've heard this is like a quick read. The font, um, no, the font is actually kind of small, but um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've heard wonderful things and I've heard it is like a quick read because you can't put it down. So we'll see, but I'm pretty excited about this one. Also, I think I got that from Pango. So I'm just really excited. And this particular author is actually near me, nearby, and I've actually interviewed her. I believe her video is up on YouTube right now for me, and her name is Dan Diane Braley, super wonderful woman. I actually, while I was writing my book, I did the interview with her, and she gave me some, like, good pointers and, like, insight, so that was pretty exciting. And so her book came out, and she's been promoting it like crazy. She's winning awards like crazy. Like, I'm so excited to read this book, especially because it's based in Martha's Vineyard, which is somewhere, like, I grew up going on vacation every single year. So I love the vineyard. I'm really excited to read this book. It's called The Silence in the Sound. And I just got this yesterday from Amazon on my doorstep, so I'm pretty excited about this. She is just an amazing person in general. So um, to be able to read her book and know that I've, like, talked and interviewed with her um, is pretty wonderful. I can't wait to meet her in person someday. Maybe I can get her to sign my book. Oh my God, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this one. Um, just because it's like close to home exact as well. And like, I want to support local authors. Like that would definitely be something that's in my best interest, I feel. And I would like people to support me. So I want to support them. And again, it's like, from Martha's Vineyard. So like at the island necklace is right there. So like, I'm really excited about this one. I just need to decide which one of these I'm going to read first. Um, I think I might read Diane's book first just because I'm so excited to talk to her about it. And she's always like doing book readings near me. And like, that would be pretty cool to like go and see her and finally talk to her about her book. Um, but I don't know. I'm excited to read them all. But again, if I start actually focusing more in on reading like I've been doing. Maybe I can start flying through some books. Um, but if I can get to all these five done this month, that would be awesome. And if I could get more, then I can add some Colleen Hoover books in here, which would be pretty exciting. 
Um, but yeah, if you've read any of the books that I've talked about, definitely drop some comments down below. Tell me about them. What do you think? If you have recommend recommendations for me, I would love to hear that as well. And I will put my book trackers up on my website. So if you are interested in printing those off, you can certainly do that. And I'm going to have some come out for every month of the year. Right now, I only have from August to March and I'll work on making the rest as well. But um, yeah, pretty excited about this. Um, welcome to the book talk side of this channel. And I'm really excited to keep sharing these things with you. And if you have any kind of questions, definitely reach out and let me know. I'd love to share this part of my life with you and have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.